What's up everyone, Jared with Ducky Customs bringing you another how-to video today and today we're going to be showing you how to install the Arsenal Mod PS4 Remap Board. It's a brand new product Arsenal Mods got out. Can't wait to show you guys. This thing is going to be sick. Uh, first we're going to get started with some disassembly of the controller. Uh, there's a few tools you're going to need uh, in order to do this. You're going to need a nylon pry tool, a number zero zero uh, double aught Phillips screwdriver. Uh, you, these can usually be found at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Target, and any kind of precision screwdriver set. You're going to need a small pair of pliers and or tweezers, and I'll explain why here in just a little bit, why it's kind of and or. If you have pliers, they work better. If you have tweezers, they'll work too. Also, you're going to want to make sure you have some form of little container, cup, cereal bowl, it doesn't matter, something to hold the parts, screws, things like that in, and because uh, you definitely don't want these things walking off from you. So without further ado, let's hop into the disassembly. Okay, in order to start the disassembly of the PS4 controller, you're going to want to flip it over. There's going to be four screws you're going to need to remove on the rear of the controller. Uh, you're going to have two of them placed down here in the grips. The other two are going to be right below the left and right triggers, or the L1, L2, R2. Um, so you're going to want to go ahead and remove those. Those are going to be the Phillips head screws. Uh, after you've removed those screws, we'll... Uh, flip it back over here. Now I've gone ahead and removed these just to kind of speed the video up a little here. Uh, once you remove them, there are four clips internally that are going to hold this controller shell together. And this is where the nylon pry tool comes into play. Uh, the first two are going to be right here. They're going to be located on either side of your headset connector and the extension port there. Uh, what you're going to want to do, preferably Typically, nylon pry tools come with an angle design, if you can see that there. Uh, you're going to want to face it to the angle facing you. You're going to want to stick the corner in, and after it's spread apart slightly, you're going to want to pull the bottom shell outwards. Now, as you do this, you're going to want to lift up right here on the grip. Now, as I said, this one's screwed apart. Some of them just kind of pop up like that. Some of them are kind of stubborn. So you want to reach in there and pry that out just a little bit and lift up on that side. Then you'll reach in the other side pry out and do the same thing since sometimes they can be more stubborn than others there we go and you'll see the two little clips right here and right there which are holding it on next you're going to kind of want to hold your thumb under it keep it from uh, going in anymore uh, you don't want it to fall back in place and clip back in place uh, the next two clips are going to be located right here on the sides now what you're going to want to do to remove these is you're going to want to push the rear shell push it off to the side and push the face plate in the opposite direction and that will pop loose do the same thing to this other side and now the controller shell is loose now what you're going to want to do I'll flip it over here you're going to want to spread the bottom just a little bit from the top and then you're going to want to work the triggers out and try to keep them from flying now when you do open the case up uh, open the shell don't just yank it open there is going to be a ribbon cable here you're going to have to remove this one's rather easy you can just reach in and pull it out just like that with your fingers and we'll set the rear shell aside for now and now we're going to get into the battery so simply lift the battery up unplug it we'll set that off to the side as well and the battery tray will be next you're going to have a couple of little clips here and I don't know if I'm going to be able to really show you. I'll do my best here. Uh, right down in here, you're going to have one that you're going to want to pull up. As soon as you get that done, the battery tray will pop right out. All right, next you're going to want to take that Phillips screwdriver, and there's going to be one screw located right here. Now, there is something I will point out uh, very quickly. This is one of the newer revision controllers. Uh, currently, it is the current revision, um, and they're going to be slightly, slightly different. Uh, one, one way that you can tell this is you take the center line of your headset port extension cable here, and you just kind of draw an imaginary line through the circuit board there. Um, when you do that, if the screw is on the right side, chances are it's going to be a newer model controller. Um, if it's on the left side, it will be an older model controller, uh, and I will get into that in just a moment. 
moment because this is something you will need to know in order to ins properly install the remap board. Um, secondly, a good indication of this being a newer model controller is going to be these blue ribbon cables on either side here, as well as these, these blue tabs. Now, sometimes these tabs will end up being white on the newer models, but more often than not, they're going to be blue. But these are going to be a surefire way to uh, determine that. Um, Sony's kind of notorious for deciding to add a revision every you know six months to their controllers so uh, you kind of got to stay on top of things like that so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that uh, screw out right in the center of that board set that over there and next you're gonna want to remove this little tab right here now this is where your pliers and or tweezers come into play if you have small pliers you can simply grab it and pull it out that way or if you have some tweezers you can grab it and you just work it from one side to the other gently and pull it out now after it's pulled out you're going to want to turn the tab inwards and tuck it into that hole that it's coming out of and next you'll lift up on the front where the triggers are and very gently work its way out now that that's uh, done we'll set that faceplate off to the side here okay next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove this board now this can uh, uh, the nice thing about the PS4 is you are not going to need to desolder uh, the rumbles in order to remove the board um, but there are going to be little clips along the sides of the board and I'll point those out on this uh, newer controller these usually don't vary too often you're going to have one here one here one here and one there so they're going to be pretty much in the same locations on either side of it and you'll simply just kind of grab the board push it back push it back that side will pop out Come over to the other side, push those back, and it should just pop right out like that. And this, at this point here, this is where, uh, we'll go ahead and take the thumbsticks off, kind of forgot to mention that part. Um, take those off, and this is about the, th this is going to be the degree of disassembly that's going to be required uh, to install the Arsenal 1 uh, PS4 remap board. So we're going to jump into that and explain a few things to you, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back, and here is the brand new Arsenal Mod PS4 remap board, and this is a really nice product, really cool board, cannot wait to start selling these on our Ducky Customs PS4 controllers. Um, what is really nice about these boards is they will work with the newer revision as well as the older revision controllers. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether you have an older model controller or a brand new one, this will work for both. And that is absolutely amazing. Before, a lot of times you would have to order a board from a remap board from a company that's, well, do you have an older controller? Do you have a newer one? Arsenal Mod's gone the extra step and made it to where you can do it with either or off the same board. Nice and simple, absolutely love it. Now, as I was saying earlier on the blue ribbon cables, which will bring the controller shell back into place here, these blue ribbon cables underneath here are going to be an indication of a newer model controller. Now, the older model controller's connections, uh, where the board made contact with these blue ribbon cables here, were located at the top of the board and would be made contact with in with these this connector. Excuse me. Um, the newer boards are going to be these wings out here on the side that are going to make the connection. So again, your newer revision controllers are going to be the outside contacts. Your older revision controllers are going to be the center one. Now, once you have determined whether you have a newer controller or an older controller, uh, then you can move on to the next step, which is going to be trimming one of the two off. Now, I'll get a close-up shot here. If you are going to be using one of the newer boards, this focused in here, if you are going to be using one of the newest board, newer boards, you're going to want to cut this section off. And if you'll notice, there's a white line directly at the top there to give you an indication as to where it cut, where to cut it off at. Now, you don't want to really go above this line. Uh, you definitely want to stay below that line. Don't go north of it. Uh, but you can cut below it, cut on the line, and remove that. Now, if you have an older model controller that uses these contacts, you'll notice that right here, 
as well as right here, right on the very edge of those wings are two white lines. You'll cut on either one of those lines to remove the wings because you won't need them. Uh, definitely, once you've determined which controller you have, trim the other side off. Don't try to shortchange it and just, well, I'll leave it on, it's not connected to anything. Well, technically it is because all of these contacts are now located over here on the sides. And if these start making contacts with things, it can cause all kinds of screwy things on your controller. So definitely make sure you trim what you do not need off. So we'll go ahead and seems how this is a newer model controller. We'll go ahead and trim this portion off here to show you. And as I said before, you do not want to cut north of that. So I'm going to actually cut just a little tiny bit below it there and now that we've removed that you can just throw that piece away not going to need that anymore okay so here's where you're going to want to be careful in installing it now once you've you've trimmed this off you've trimmed the board off here uh show that uh you're, what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to take your soldering iron which i kind of forgot to mention in the beginning of this video and you're going to want to go ahead and tin that little contact now it's going to be directly above the line that you trimmed it off at which is why you don't want to cut above the line sorry that was a little out of focus there uh, so you definitely want to cut below the line. That's why you don't want to cut above it because you have to solder this. Um, so after you've tinned that connection, we'll show you here, got the board set up and a pair of helping hands. Uh, what you're going to do is you're actually going to position this board on the back. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to line these up as best as you can now they're they're going to kind of flip flop and, and move and everything at this point uh, so what you'll do is you'll line this up to where all of your contacts are making perfect contact on it and then you'll come over here kind of trace it down where it's going to be going to be sitting it's kind of kind of tricky here uh, you'll get that where it's going to be kind of sitting sitting down and then I'm going to use uh, this little alligator clip that I have here with a couple of little bits of rubber on it and I'll take and, and move that and allow that to uh, uh, be positioned uh, just to hold that in place to, to solder that down now once you've you've got it squared away here you're going to take your soldering iron <clears throat> excuse me getting over a little cold here and you're going to want to just solder those two pieces together now what I've done is I've actually gone and, and, and I've tinned the contact of the actual switch here um, as well as tinned the contact on the board itself um, and then that way when you go down with it when you connect it all you have to do is just kind of melt the solder and it will just flow right together be nice and simple on that and th this is a, a step here what this is actually for is it's for your touchpad uh, functionality on that which we'll explain here in just a little bit um, now after you've done that we will remove the board from the helping hands here and then next you're going to want to line this up now here's where it can get tricky and here's where the tweezers help as well. What you're going to want to do, show that as best as I can there, is underneath it you're going to see the two studs in which that lines up on. And this is where you're going to want to have them perfectly lined up as best as humanly, humanly possible here. Now, now after you've got the studs right here, right there and right there through you're going to want to kind of look at the edges here make sure it's running uh make sure it's running square make sure it's running good top and bottom after that's done you'll push it down into place and all four of your clips here 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 and here will clip into place and next what you're going to want to do in fact we'll move the helping hands out of the way here now what you're going to want to do is add just a little bit of hot glue or double-sided tape, uh, whatever whatever works best for you uh, on the back of the board here, and you'll simply bend that over and stick it down on it. Now you don't want to go excessive on it, it's just to kind of hold it in place. Now once the controller's together and the battery covers back on this board, it's going to, for the most part, hold it in place. This is mainly due to 
ease the installation so you don't have to gob on lots of glue or cut a massive big strip of double-sided tape or, or anything like that uh, in order to hold it on. Uh, we're just going to use a little bit of double-sided tape here because it's such a quick and simple process. A little easier than hot glue and typically more people have double-sided tape laying around than they do hot glue guns which you will need a hot glue gun for the button installation later on and we will get that to that later in the video now after you've put that double-sided tape on you simply push it down now that that's in place been over and everything's looking good there uh, boards all lined up now we can move on to the next step which is going to be soldering your jumper wires to each of the connections uh, so we will get started on that and then we will be right back to show you where those need to be installed at okay so now that we got those soldered on we'll show you what we did here uh, on the LED, now because this is a newer controller, you're actually going to have two different LED locations. Uh, one on the newer revisions and a different location on the older revisions. Uh, the newer revision is going to be this contact right there. So you're going to see a series of three contacts there and it's going to be the top one closest to the switch there. Uh, you'll simply run a small jumper wire from there to the LED spot right here on the board. Next, you're going to run the L3, which is going to be your left thumbstick click, and you're going to run that from the L3 spot on the board to this connection on the thumbstick module. Then you'll run a small jumper wire here on the R3 connection for the right thumbstick click from here over to this contact on it. Now, the contacts are the same on the left and right, uh, same position anyway, so where one goes on one, it will definitely go on the other, so no need to uh, worry about that or anything like that. Now, if you are connecting your tack switches and everything, you're going to want to use one and two. Uh, don't use three and four. Um, you can use three and four on a four button remap, but it's best to go ahead and use number one and number two, which are depicted as T1 and T2 respectively uh, for your tack switches. Now, the ground contacts are going to be the two contacts between T2 and T4 and the two contacts between T1 and T3. So it's gonna be these two right here and these two right here. Now, the nice thing, and I've mentioned this on the Xbox One install vid, uh, it doesn't matter which ground you use. All the grounds are connected together, so whether you use this one, this one, this one, or all of them if you prefer. Uh, if you want to run your uh, tack switches together, run the grounds together on those, uh, and then run one single ground wire up here for all four of your tack switches, perfectly okay to do that. If you want to run an individual ground wire per tack switch, perfectly okay to do that too. It's it's very uh, modular in the sense that you can pretty much run the grounds however you want as long as the switches are hooked up correctly. Um, so after we've got this done, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to install the buttons on the PS4 controller and how to uh, glue those, wire those up, etc. We're going to go ahead and do that off camera for the most part. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll show you how to place the holes uh, and then we'll drill them and, and mount them off camera to shorten the video a little bit. And then we'll be right back with how to wire those up. Okay, so we've gone ahead and drilled the holes and installed the buttons and went ahead and wired them up as well. Uh, you can see them here on the back. Now, again, as I said in the Xbox One uh, installation video, there is no real correct place to place these buttons. Um, some people say here, some people say there. Uh, just briefly, wherever is comfortable for your hands is where you want to install them. Um, personally, for me, it was comfortable in this location here, so that's where we ended up installing them. Now, you can install them further down, you can install them further up, you can even install them up here if you want to, uh, wherever there's clearance on the inside of the controller. Uh, a few limitations, but for the most part, wherever your fingertips rest, is, you're going to be able to mount those buttons in that location. Um, now, how we measured these in particular is on the inside of... Uh, the molding here, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but you can kind of see right around that pedestal right there, kind of a ghosted square, and it's part of the molding process. And what we went by for this installation was 
right underneath these buttons it was a line and then it curved back down towards the grip so it would come down this way and do that and we just drilled those holes right there on the corner um the main thing is just to get them even uh, on the PlayStation controllers. On the Xbox controllers, it's a little easier to measure for them on the outside of the controller, so on the back of the shell. With the PlayStation controller, there's not really a whole lot of reference points uh, to go off of as far as uh, measuring with calipers and stuff like that go. So what we do is we turn into the inside where you have... A lot of asymmetrical lines going on, uh, some parallel lines. I mean, you can go off of these and measure uh, wherever you want the buttons as far as, as far as that goes. Now, if you do end up wanting to place the buttons in different locations, higher up, etc., I suggest you take your the rest of the controller assembly, insert it into the rear shell, look underneath it, kind of raise it up a little bit, and, and check for your clearances to determine where that's going to be viable to put those. Also, I will note one other thing that needs to be done for uh, clearance issues um, is right here on the edge of where the rumbles sit. If you'll notice, I'll kind of zoom in there. Right there, we've taken some sandpaper and sanded that down flat to give it a little bit more clearance on those buttons. Now, even though we use 6x6 tack switches, they are not very big switches. They are small, but due to the height and the clearance issue, we did have to take a little bit out of that, and that can vary depending on your button location as well. Um, so that's not a, uh, you may not have to do that every time. It just kind of depends on where you, where you want to install your rear buttons. Um, so after we drilled our holes, installed our buttons and glued them the same, uh, you're going to wire them up the same as the Xbox One installation. Uh, you're going to want to go diagonally. Um, what we did here was we wired a ground from this tack to this tack and then from this tack to the board. So rather than running a whole additional wire up to the board, that way you will only have one ground wire and then one hot wire for each one of your tack switches. Uh, makes installation, wiring, etc. just a little bit simpler and not quite as complicated. Now the way we've actually run our wiring here um, is we've come across this, came down in and bent it over this and put just a dab of hot glue right underneath that to hold that in place. Uh, went down below there and uh, figured that would be a, a nice tucked away location for the wiring as the battery sits right up against this area here. So there's not a whole lot of clearance. Now you do want to make sure that this wire is tucked all the way down so when the clips go back and reattach to these two little prongs on the shell that it won't interfere with that, press on it, cut it in two, uh, or anything like that. Now uh, as far as wiring these up, as I said before, you want to go diagonally to them. Uh, now, when you are running your ground the way we have it run here, uh, you're going to want to make sure they are on the same side. Uh, so, for example, ours, you will have markings on, your, on the rear side of your switches, and basically just mark which corner you've put the hot wire, which corner you've put the ground wire, and repeat that on the other side. Now, once all that is wired up, then you come over and wire these up here. Now in order to do that, we'll go ahead and do that live on camera here. Take the battery back out. Just had that in there, uh, put that back on to make sure everything had some clearance and, and everything else on it. Now again, we'll go over a short uh, repeat of this. Um, so you're going to want to use tack 1 and tack 2 um, rather than 3 or 4 on the initial two buttons. Now you can have four tacks, which is not a problem at all. Um, in order to install four buttons, uh, we'll touch on that right quick, almost forgot. Uh, in order to install the four buttons, uh, basically it's going to be routed the same way as it is here. It's going to be uh, put together the same way that it is here, except you, what you will do is on the bottom side where you've got the ground wire, for example, move my finger out of the way. Say you have your ground wire here and you want to put another tack switch down here lower. Uh, you'll put that in there and what you'll do is run a small ground jumper wire from the bottom corner of this over to the opposite side of it. Uh, you want to make sure it's still going to be on that pole as far as the internals of the switch goes. So that will 
allow us to maintain the one ground wire going back to our board, even with the four tack switches. You'll have one centralized ground for all the switches. And then you'll run an additional wire, hot wire off of each one of the tack switches. So you'll end up having four hot wires and one ground wire uh, up here to connect to the board in the end. Now, as I was saying, you wanted to have it on tack one and tack two. The grounds can be mounted anywhere, so we'll go ahead and do that off camera. There is one thing, though, that I did forget to mention uh, just a little bit ago in the uh, video was the location of the old-style LED. And i got to print it off a picture here to show you. Um, the new style, as I showed you on this controller here, is going to have the three contact points here, here, and here. And it's going to be that top contact point. Now, on the same board over here where you have this side connector, get that in the camera, sorry about that, where you have this connector, directly above that you're going to have your three contact points. So right there, and it's going to be the furthest one on the left. So it will be the left contact for the, your older style boards. Now, if you have a board that, as I stated before, has the blue ribbons, it is going to be the newer revision. Uh, those, I believe, started at uh, JDM 30, I believe. Um, and then the next one was 31. I believe there's actually a 41 uh, out now as well. I could be mistaken on that, so don't quote me on that. Uh, any revision earlier than that, be it a JDM 020, a JDM 21, uh, 10 or 11, those are going to be your older style. Only the 30 and up model boards are going to uh, have that newer LED location. So just wanted to touch on that to uh, clear that up before we moved forward. So we're going to go ahead and trim these up and tin these contacts and wire them in place, and we'll be right back. Okay, so I know we said we were going to uh, install that on camera, but decided to do, go ahead and do it off camera again. Seems how I touched on the points that I had forgot. Now, after we've soldered that up, you'll see that there are three wires connected that weren't previously. We connected switch one and switch two, as well as our ground. And again, these don't necessarily have to be on switch one and switch two. Um, whichever thanks to the remap board and the excellent technology behind this board uh it can be whatever you want so it doesn't have to be one to one two to two three to three four to four etc um it can be whichever two you want as if you're only doing two buttons do one and two but it doesn't matter which is which as long as they're both connected it won't matter with the remap board so now we're going to start the reassembly process and this is going to be a great time to put your thumbsticks back on if you uh, want to change the colors put xbox one sticks on it scuff sticks etc etc uh, now is going to be the perfect time in order to to do that so without further ado <laughs> we will flip this back over and as you get your front panel, you're going to want to set that back down after you've reinstalled the thumbsticks. And you do that by simply pressing them down. You're going to want to start thumbstick side first and kind of go in at a little angle here uh, to get it to all set down. Now, as you're going in at an angle, something you'll want to do is this little ribbon cable. That's going to be for your touchpad. You're going to want to move that off to the side for clearance. And then as you are setting this down into the front shell, do this as best as I can so you can see. As you do that, you're going to want to guide that through this small hole right here, which is exactly where it came out of. So you will guide that through there. Then once that is set down in place, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to take your Phillips screwdriver and that screw that came out of that location Well, once I get it to set back down in there flush. And you're going to want to put that screw back in. And that's going to hold everything in place while we move on to our next step. Now, the next step, uh, you're going to take this small ribbon cable. And this is where the tweezers will most definitely come in handy uh, if you chose to use that as opposed to the pliers. We will pull that tab up there and then you'll simply guide it back into that slot give it a little push sometimes easier said than done a 
we go. You will simply push that back in. Now once that is done and that that is screwed in, you'll want to make sure that everything's where it should be there. Then the next thing you're going to want to do is install the battery cover. You'll do that by simply putting it in place and clipping it down. Definitely want to reconnect your battery here. Apologies if I'm getting off camera a little bit here. The next thing you're going to want to do is this ribbon cable that came out of the controller beforehand. You're going to want to just push that back into the connector. And it can can kind of get tricky and there's not a lot of not a lot of room to get your hand in there to do that, but once it slides in, you'll just push it right in and that's all there is to that. Just that wire up just a little bit. Now next, in order to finish the installation, as you go in here, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to slide your triggers in first, and you're going to want to do it at an angle. You'll slide your triggers in first until they clear, and the shell touches top to bottom. Then you will push the rear of the shell down, making sure that everything has a good amount of clearance under it. Make sure your two tabs here, as well as your two tabs up here, snap into place. And you will see a slight gap in it, but that's what the screws are for. Then after that, you simply reinstall the four screws uh, into your controller. Check everything out. Make sure all your buttons function properly. Make sure there's a good firm click in everything. Make sure nothing's uh, missing or not working right. Uh, make sure your triggers there and that's something you do want to kind of be careful with when uh, taking these out on your triggers The little springs in there can definitely uh, pop out sometimes uh, When going back with it as well as taking it apart. So you want to kind of be careful uh, as far as the triggers go, but Once you've done that and reassembled the controller then it is uh, officially done the installation of the arsenal mod remap board is complete now if you have any questions or information regarding this install or regarding anything else and to do with the xbox one install as well uh feel free to leave us a message uh on any of our social media you can get a hold of uh, mirror at arsenal mod or me i'm jared at ducky customs uh you can get a hold of me at info at ducky and you can reach uh mirror at arsenal mod at info at arsenal um so I hope this video has been informative and good luck with your installation and we'll see you later.